Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're starting a new series, so we're going to be working into integration and antiderivatives. So today is a very general introduction, so let's just go ahead and dive into it. So with integration, take everything you know about derivatives and flip it. So we are going to be using all those rules that we learned, but we're going to be doing the opposite. So let's go into an example to see what I mean by that. Here we have the official notation of an integral. That little squiggly thing, that's the integral. So we have the integral of 3x squared, and that little dx right there, that means we're taking the antiderivative in terms of x. So just like normal derivative notation, d dx, this is a little bit different. It's with that squiggle line and with it normal dx. So let's go ahead and talk about what this means. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So really what we're trying to do is we're trying to find something that we take the derivative of that equals 3x squared. So that's what I mean by working backwards. So this is just going to be x cubed, right? The derivative of x to the power of 3, we use power rule, and that becomes 3x squared. And so that tells me that my antiderivative is going to be whatever we originally took the derivative of. So this is potentially x cubed. The reason I say potentially is because we can also take the derivative of x cubed plus 1, and we get 3x squared, right? I can take the derivative of x cubed minus 2, and I also get 3x squared. That's because the derivative of a constant, it just goes to 0. So that actually changes our answer just a little bit. So we have the antiderivative, or the integral, of 3x squared in terms of x is equal to x cubed, but we're adding on some constant c, because there could potentially be a number there. Right now, we just say plus c because there's no way to tell what that actual number is of the original function. And don't forget to add your plus c. I know on like the AP calculus test, you get marked off without if you don't have it. So we're just going to go into a couple examples here. Nothing big today. It's just a general introduction. So here we have the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. So let's set this up in a way that makes a little more sense to us. I want to take the derivative of something, that's what we're trying to look for, and when I take the derivative of it, I get 1 over 1 plus x squared. If we remember, this is going to be inverse tangent. So, so that tells me this is my solution, the inverse tangent, but we can't forget we have to add on some constant. Let's go ahead and try another one. So we have the antiderivative of cosine of x in terms of x is equal to something. Let's try to figure out what that something is. So I want to take the derivative of it in order to get cosine of x. And we know that the derivative of sine is equal to cosine of x. So this is almost our solution. We have sine of x, but we have to add on that constant c. Let's try one more. Here, let's set it up in a way that's familiar. So derivative of something is equal to 1 over x. And again, we're just using our memory of derivatives, and this is going to be the natural log of x. And so this is almost our full solution, but I have to add on that value c. So that's all that antiderivative is. It gets a little more complicated, and of course, we're going to dive deeper into the rules as these videos go on. But this is a nice little introduction as to what we're doing. So this is all I have for us today. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it. Make sure to check out my other playlists. They're linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.